Welcome to another episode of This Is My Architecture. We're live here in Sydney again this afternoon with a great buzz. Rob from AWS here, and joining me today is Greg Coburn, Chief Cloud Officer at AC3. Welcome, Greg, great to have you here. Thanks, Rob, and thanks for having me. It's an awesome day. Yeah? Can you tell us a little bit more about what AC3 does? Yeah, AC3 is a premier consulting partner of AWS, and uh, we've got our MSP competency, our digital customer experience competency, and our DevOps competency, and, and we help people on their cloud journey. Awesome. And can you tell me more about the business problem we're going to be uh, discussing here that you helped solve? Yeah, sure. So we had New South Wales Spatial Services uh, kind of have this this very manual process. They were they had all these development applications coming in that they had to convert from uh, GeoTIFF into Land XML. That's provided by a third party, and they were cre keeping track of this conversion uh, with spreadsheets. And and yeah. when they had queries coming in, it was all a very manual process and very slow for them. All right, so converting a very manual process into what I understand to be a completely serverless process. So can you draw us or walk us through it, please? Yeah, no trouble. So we might have a uh, developer come in here and they need to talk to uh, API Gateway, right? So we've got our GeoTIFF that comes in here. It goes in from API Gateway and it'll get stored into S3. Yep. From there, it triggers a notification to our third party provider here. Cool. So that GeoTIFF file will get sent over to that third party provider. Yep. They'll then send back a what's called a land XML file. And a land XML file is a representation of that TIFF in a particular format that, that has some geospatial information. From there, we need to kick off the uh, validation process here. Cool, and, and how are you kicking that uh, step function So off? That, that, that step function is kicked off by an event. That, so when that file lands yep. in the S3 bucket with the right uh, folder structure, the step function gets kicked off. So then from there, we, we start off by doing a very simple, um, is this valid XML, right? So step functions, many Lambda functions, and we're able to parallelize that out, right? So we check, is that a valid XML, and is it currently conforming to this, the current Land XML format? And what kind of libraries and technologies are you using to do that inside of Lambda? Yeah, so, so we're, over here, we actually do our, our render validation over here, okay? Yep. So this one is actually forming a polygon, and we had to use the, the geospatial libraries that were provided along with Python to, to do that, okay? So the problem that we had there, the challenge that we faced with, with that was those spatial, those, those, uh, those um, objects were really, really big, okay? And yep. the package size that you can have for Lambda is actually kind of small. So we had to kind of understand what was in those shared objects and all the, all the relationship there that we needed to only get us down to the, the core that we needed to draw those polygons yep. in memory and get that into a size that was available and usable by Lambda. And so this is ultimately why you've ended up splitting things out to get that library size down. Correct, correct. Okay, cool. So you validated your polygons uh, you know, around the boundaries of the property. What are you doing with that data next? Yeah, so what we do with that data is we're actually storing that all into uh, DynamoDB. Uh, so uh, there's a whole bunch of these validations that kick off. Yep. And, and depending on, on what's happening, they might store different information and they might, some might fail and some might um, succeed. Yep. And, and that's all interesting for different people. And, and based on who it is, that we might get a notification center out here and, and that might alert someone to where it is in, in the process or if there was a, a broken step in yep. that validation that they need to go and, and get rectified or, or something like that. Okay, and are you, are you using step functions to manage your state exclusively or is there some state stored in Dynamo? Uh, there's a little bit of both depending on a number of things. So yep. we've got state um, stored in step functions for the, very, the validation process, but the document can actually go through a number of iterations, right? So a developer might need to upload another document, another version of that document, yep. and that particular state is being stored in DynamoDB. And using exactly the same workflow to, exactly to update the same and represent workflow. that state. So imagine you've actually got a, 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 a multiple developers uploading things several times. We, we can actually take this whole process here and parallelize that again, right? Yep. So we've not got just the parallelization process within the step functions. We can, step fun we can parallelize that step function process again as well. Okay, so what's the net result of this for the business? You, you've gone from what I understand would take multiple days to yeah. To so how long so would this? we can now um, do up to 500 um, uh, documents a day that we're processing through the system. Uh, we're doing now 250 validations, which we were never able to do before. 
uh, on that Land XML, so all sorts of things that they're checking. Yep. And it's up to two days faster now for that, that process to get that GeoTIFF file converted yep. into that Land XML. That is an absolutely awesome result. Thank you so much, Greg, for coming and explaining what you've done to build the world's first serverless geospatial data lake. And thank you very much for listening to another episode of This Is My Architecture. Thanks, Rob. Back to the desk.